This is Mobile App Development TV with John Houghton. John Houghton with Mobile App Development TV. I'm here with Marcus Weller of Skelly. How are you doing, Marcus? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Great. Tell, tell me about this helmet that, that you developed. Yeah, so the helmet is basically like a fighter pilot helmet for motorcyclists. So it has a, a heads-up display and it uses that heads-up display to render a 180 degree viewing angle rear view camera as well as GPS navigation and gauges from the motorcycle. So you have those, those you know, virtual images and they're focused at infinity so it's really easy to see. Uh, it's out of the way so it's not distracting and it only shows you what you need to get from point A to point B safely. And there hasn't been any buzz about this at all. <laughs> There's been a lot of buzz about it. So what were some of the considerations and what are some of the challenges for somebody that's thinking about developing a wearable? I think the key thing for developing a wearable is to be very focused on a specific problem and to go deep on that problem rather than trying to be you know, all things to all people. So I think that's kind of the key to getting a great user experience is really you know, succinct vertical integration and simple feature set that's deep and solves a specific problem. If you do that, you're likely to succeed as a startup um, because you, you can kind of focus your finite resources towards that particular problem. If you end up doing something that's more of a broad platform, you have to deal with so many different verticals and your, your resources tend to be spread out a bit more uh, and your impact is more diffuse. And so I think that's uh, the challenge that a lot of times startups face when they're, when they're trying to do a wearable technology. Well, I think that applies to a lot of things, not just doing a startup in general, but doing an app. I see a lot of people doing apps and they're doing, trying to be all things to all people, whereas apps are task specific. It's almost like taking away options and editing. And uh, even uh, Tim Cook says it's easy to add, it's hard to edit. So what was the task that your helmet focused on? Well, first thing we wanted to do was to take GPS navigation and make that available visually to motorcyclists. It's been available to drivers for a very long time. And the reason for that is because it, it takes down the cognitive load. It reduces the amount of cognitive load that it requires for you to both drive the vehicle and figure out where you're going and get there safely. Well, I've never seen anybody do a GPS in their hand while they're driving on a motorcycle. It's just not possible. It's not possible. I mean, you're wearing gloves and you shouldn't do that uh, and it'd be distracting. So you need a, 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 a technology that's optimized for doing that. The other feature that we were really focused on is creating better situational awareness. And that's really at the core of our technology is this 180 degree viewing angle rear view camera that gives the rider a bubble of awareness. They can see what's going on behind them and also to the sides. And by rendering that in the heads up display, they never have to turn their head. They can keep their focus on their direction of travel, which is ultimately going to keep them safer. I always think about that, especially when I'm riding my bike, is that, is there a car coming up behind me? Because I've never seen them. So a potential use case is someone's coming up you know, a lot faster and you see them, you can get out of the way. Do you, you, you see cases like that occurring? Yeah, I and mean, we get that a lot from the, you know, we've had over 150,000 people apply as beta testers for the product, and part of that application is to write an essay, and we see that that argument a lot, like being at a stoplight and being able to avert if a car is not stopping, um, they get out of the way. But I think that the the probably the more frequent use case is being able to see what's going on in your blind spot. So as a rider, you have these big blind spots and you need to do these head checks while you're driving in order to be able to see what's going on around you. And we, we, we make that so you don't have to do that anymore. It's like a rear view mirror on steroids. It shows you all the way around in 180 degrees. So it actually overlaps with your own human peripheral vision. And because it's doing that, you're so much more aware of what's going on around you and you can change lanes more safely. Uh, and you can also, detect when people are entering your lane and maybe they don't see you. So it's, it gives you a better sort of platform for situational awareness. So technology applied to solve a problem. Where do you see, do you have any thoughts about where wearables are going and, and what, what we can expect in the, in the next couple of years? I really hope that um, wearables, especially wearable displays, uh, start going in the direction of an anti-user interface. So basically removing the necessity to constantly interface with the device manually um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to devices that are intelligent enough and situationally aware enough that they can give you the information you need um, in a more intuitive way that, that sort of takes a proactive approach to rendering data or information or um, helping you make decisions in your, in your real-time environment. So it might take some AI. I think that AI is a huge part of this. It's an extremely important area right now. Um, it's it's kind of scary. Um, but it's also, I think, one of the, the greatest enablers. It's 
it kind of reminds me of the Manhattan Project in that it's this fast and furious development for a potentially revolutionary um, way of, of you know doing something and I think it, it has the potential to be that transformative you know um, as, as you know nuclear energy was um, and, and it also has its inherent dangers you know as well but I think AI is kind of critical for us to have devices that are intelligent enough where we can sort of do some local processing that's quite minimal and, and not very power intensive but have, uh, but have some really powerful processing happening in the cloud that can help us make better decisions in real time in our environment. Marcus Weller, thank you very much. It's my pleasure, thanks. You have been watching Mobile App Development TV with John Houghton. Mobile App Development TV is part of the Mobilecast Media blog. For more information, please visit mobilecastmedia.com slash blog. Thank you.